This is video two in the dashboard module. And in this video, we will build our first dashboard. And the dashboard that we're gonna work on is uh, material initial inventories. The three videos in the initial version of this module will all use the uh, Obby Electronics model that we've used in uh, case study three, and that we will also use in case study four. And so here's a completed version. Uh, and the dashboard that we're gonna build uh, here is the, as I said, the initial material quantities. And so you can see that I have the materials over here on the left side. Uh, on the right side, I have a histogram that shows the initial quality, uh, initial quantities. Uh, and then uh, a set of cards here, which oops, I forgot to rename here, uh, but that let me filter by either raw material or finished goods. And so you can see on the upper card, uh, I can filter uh, by particular material. So box A, box B, box C. I can do a multi-select and say the inventories of all of the boxes. These are uh, raw materials. I can look at paint and so on. So I have the, this, this two filter mechanism here where I can do by filters or uh, by um, uh, material class, whether it's a finished good or a raw material. So this is a fairly simplistic uh, dashboard, but um, uh, the next few steps we're going to actually build it. So I switched back to the version of the Obby Electronics model uh, that we had at the end of case study three. So now in this one, uh, the only dashboards that we have, if I look at the results, uh, are the two that we've seen uh, in several of the video modules where we have uh, MakeSpan and the standard dispatch list. And once again, the standard dispatch list, you can uh, look at some SIM bits and it gives you the instructions uh, for building that. So we're gonna go and uh, remember, uh, one thing uh, to uh, remember all the time when dealing with uh, dashboards is we have two different places. You have the results tab. And so it's in the results tab that we can create new dashboards and edit those dashboards. And in the planning tab, you can see that it's the same dashboard, but we don't have any of that editing uh, or, or dashboard creation capability. So make sure that when you're looking at building dashboards, uh, you're in the uh, results tab. So I'm gonna switch this planning tab over to something else so I don't confuse myself by uh, being in the wrong tab. So there we go, back to results. Okay, so let's build this first dashboard. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on dashboard report, and I'm going to name this one initial material quantities. And what we see is the dashboard, oops, it's on a different monitor here, there we go, uh, is the uh, dashboard build edit um, interface. And so uh, this dashboard uses the um, table, the materials table. Recall the materials table is what we use to uh, auto create the material elements and then we specify their initial quantities and that's where the data comes from for uh, the dashboard uh, that we're gonna see here. And so the first step, as I said, uh, is to set the uh, material table. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a card right here, just click on cards, and then I'm gonna add a pie. And I'm gonna do this in two steps. I'm gonna do the initial filtering and then I'll do the secondary filtering uh, in a second step. As I mentioned in the introduction video, I'm relatively new to Simeo dashboards. Uh, so this interface is, is just doesn't yet feel intuitive to me. So when I build dashboards, uh, there's a lot of trial and error involved. And so it doesn't, it might not look like it in this video because I've already gone through the steps uh, to map them out. Uh, but just be aware that when you're trying to learn how to build those in this particular interface, experimentation is important and little changes can have big uh, impact on your dashboards. Okay, so I have my card in place and I have my, oops, I, I, sorry about that. I did a pie and I don't want a pie. I want a chart. Sorry about that. So now I have my card and my chart. So I'm going to go to cards. And the first thing I'm going to do is drag the initial quantity right here to this actual value right here. And you can see that now my card has my uh, quantity, initial quantity. So we just took the sum of the initial quantity. For this one, I'm not particularly interested in that sum. I just want to quantify or I just want to have all of the uh, values. So I'm going to click on the little gear here to edit and I'm going to switch to the compact view and then I'm going to unclick or uncheck all of the values other than the, uh, oops, I wanted to get rid of the subtitle, other than the title. Okay, so do, do that and click OK. And so then the next thing I'm going to do uh, is just drag M name, remember that's our material name, to the series. 
And so now you can see what that does is it sets the series to be the uh, of the individual cards uh, to be one for each material name. And then this initial quantity, since we're only showing the title, is showing that material name uh, title. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to then rename this. So just right click on the title bar here and I'm going to edit names and I'm going to call this materials. And I'm going to go to the data across the top, the, the data ribbon, and then I'm going to set the multiple master filter. And so you can see you have two basic options here if you want to use this, uh, this element as a filter. One is to just have a single one, which would only let me choose one at a time. The multiple master filter is the one that lets me do multi-select. So hold down the controller shift key and select multiple ones. And so that's what I want. Okay, so we've got the initial part of the cards done. Now let's just switch over to the chart. So make sure that you click on chart. Uh, and then I'm going to drag initial quantity here initial quantity here to value right here and so now you can see my initial quantity the sum of um, uh, the sum of all of the initial quantities and then as we did before I'm going to drag the M name to the series and so once I do that as we saw with the cars what that's doing is saying I want to use the individual uh, material names uh, um, so that I can then see all of the different values if I have uh, no filtering done. So I'm going to then go and change the name here and just call this, let's see, what do we want to call this? Let's say quantity, initial quantity. And now you see when I click on the, end of, on the uh, make the selection in the materials that the filtering propagates. So this is what we talked about as a key concept of interactivity, where I choose this and it impacts this other uh, dashboard element. And because we have that multi-filter, I can hold down the control key and select different values. So you can see I have all of the box um, components here. If I wanna have the components themselves, there are the four component types. Uh, if I want to do the modules, of course, in our initial inventory for the Obby Electronics, we didn't have any of the uh, module, module elements, uh, but nevertheless, we can still have that. Also note that you have this filter icon where you can clear the master filter. And so if you want to get back to a state where you don't have any, uh, you're not applying any filtering to the other elements, just click on that little uh, funnel with the X there to uh, get rid of the filtering. And so the last thing we'll do for the simple uh, dashboard is to add this second level of filtering. So note that we have all of the materials shown here, that we have two different classes of materials. If we look at, if we remember from the table M class, we have raw materials, which are the boxes, the components, uh, the uh, paint, and then we have finished goods, which are the, uh, the modules. So what I'd like to be able to do is, is have that secondary filtering. So to do that, I'm going to go back to home and add another card. And so it shows up uh, right here. And then I'm going to drag the material class to the actual. So you can see the actual uh, count there. Again, I'm gonna go and fix the same way we did before. Go and pick the compact one and just choose the title so that we can just see uh, the titles. And then I will go and use M class again, and this time to the series. And now you see that we have the two uh, different um, uh, material classes. You have finished goods uh, and raw material. And so right now it's set where you can't select it, but I can fix that uh, by going to data. And as we did before, we could, we could do, uh, we only have two choices. So there's no point in having a uh, multiple master filter. So once I do single master filter, now we see uh, that the filtering happens. So if I click on raw material, or finished goods, uh, either one. Um, I guess, well, well, now that I look at it, I guess we do want the multi-master so that I get the little destroy here or, or clear the filter. So it, when we have the multiple filter master, it then has the, um, the option, I guess, to have the filter, have no filter at all. Whereas when I had the single master, it's either gonna be uh, one or the other. So we, in this case, we do want the multiple master so that I can go in uh, and eliminate um, the filter. And so when you see, when I have this filter to say raw material, 
not only does it filter the uh, the chart, but it also filters the other card. So we don't see module A, module B, and module C here because I filtered them out here. Similarly, if I go to finished goods, I see I don't see any of the raw materials. Of course, in our uh, Obby electronics model, we had all of those initial inventories as zero. So let me just save this, and we'll go back in and show that you know if we had those values as something else. So if we uh, go back to our data and go back to our materials, and let's say I don't know that I have 34, 22, 98, let's say, and then I go back and look at my um, oops. I want to do this and uh, I've already done what I said to be careful of. I go back into my results tab and look at finished goods and you can see that I didn't even have to run the model here because it's the, the uh, filter, I'm sorry, the um, data source that we're using here is not the logs but the data file, um, the, the uh, data table. And so now we can see, you know, if we have the filter off, we can see everything. If we don't, uh, if we have the filter on, then we just see that individual material class. Okay, so let me to be complete here, change the name here. So I'm going to go here and uh, I want to, oh, I've got to go back into edit mode. I'm sorry. Go back to edit mode and change this name to material class. So go to edit names, material class. And now we have a nice dashboard that has the material selector, the material class selector, and then a plot show or a, a bar graph showing the uh, initial inventory based on that filtering. Okay, so one last thing that I'm going to comment on here on this one and that I'll bring back up again is that we can export and when we export the um, dashboard it exports to the, an XML file and as we've seen before we can import that XML file uh, into any Simio model. So if I have another Simio model that has the same table structure, so if we look at the materials table, so if we're consistent in uh, our use of the tables, so that if you have a materials related table that has this same structure, then it's really simple to import dashboards. And so that's one thing to keep in mind as you're building models, especially when we build scheduling type models, they have a lot of commonality. So we can exploit that commonality uh, uh, making these dashboards uh, transferable across different models. And so finally, again, we're in the results uh, view, but we also have the planning view. So you can see I've changed it because I, I changed that um, the value of the data tables. So I'll just go back over to operational planning, uh, create a new plan, and then if I go in my uh, results, now I see the dashboard that we just created. And because I'm in the planning mode, again, we don't see the edit or um, the create a new dashboard is strictly uh, view only, but now we have this uh, we have this uh, two-level filtering uh, that I showed in the initial model So that's it for our very first dashboard again a very simple dashboard uh, But one that demonstrates a couple of key uh, components that we'll see uh, for future dashboards